my pretties. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin. I am so stoked about this reading vlog because we are going full over the garden wall and I'm so excited. Obviously, I dressed appropriately. In case you don't know, over the Garden Wall is a cartoon series that was on Cartoon Network in 2014, but it's really blown up in the last few years. Thank God it's so good. Please watch it. It's just spectacular. And it's about two brothers who are kind of stuck in this like mystical version of a forest nearby their town. And in each episode, they're in like a different kind of creepy folk horror type scenario that they need to get out of to eventually hopefully get out of this forest. With that said, this week I'm going specifically for Pottsfield. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the show, it's an episode where they're in this rural farm town with some very dark harvest traditions involving wearing pumpkins. It's my favorite episode. So I have gathered some books that I think will be great Pottsfield-like reads. And yeah, I just want to get in the mood. It's October. I want to consume as much pumpkin as I possibly can. I want to read these pumpkin-y books, wear a lot of orange, and just live my best life. So with that said, let's get into the TBR. Welcome to TBR Shelf. So for this video, we have two novels and two graphic novels. I like to kind of balance spooky and cozy. Graphic novels are a great way to do that. I think I'm going to start with Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. This is about a family of three, a uh, father, mother, and daughter who move out of New York City because the daughter has severe asthma and the air quality in New York is really bad. So they move out to the country to this really rural town where I think time has kind of stood still and they have a lot of troubling harvest traditions that the family eventually gets in on once they sort of make friends with the townspeople. So I think it's a pretty classic, one of the earliest folk horror novels, and I'm really excited about it. The other novel I have here is Dark Harvest. I mean, we have a pumpkin head on the freaking cover. Perfect. I also, it's just a nice little little horror paperback and the cover so sick. Uh, this one, also small rural town, right? Again, we're going for Pottsfield. And in this one, the harvest tradition has to do with the teenage boys of the town hunting the October boy, who is this pumpkin head jack-o'-lantern guy. He fights back. So I think it's kind of just like every Halloween night, the October boy and the boys of the town brawl. Um, I don't really know why, but I assume we'll find out. The cover is definitely giving Pottsfield. So again, I'm hopeful. And the graphic novel wise, we've got Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson. This one, I it seems to be more akin to the other episodes of Over the Garden Wall than Pottsfield specifically, but you know, all these little guys, they're humanoid vegetable fruit head people. And it's all like mystical forest slash farming. It has, it seems to have both of those settings and it's spooky and I think it'll fit the vibe. And I just love middle grade graphic novels. And I thought that this lineup needed some levity. That's what we're reading. Let's start.
main goal for this video is to just look like I work at a pumpkin patch. I am about halfway through Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon, and yes, the cover of this is ass. This book was written in the early 70s, so I'll put up some like really sick old like horror paperback covers of this that are much cooler. So anyway, I'm struggling. I am struggling. I'm determined and I'm struggling. But let's get into a quick synopsis. So this is about a family of three, father, mother, daughter, who move to a small Connecticut town. So they finally find this beautiful old house in this rural town that seems to be like untouched by time. Like it takes place in the early 70s, but there are still like horses and buggies. It's very stuck in the past and that's how the citizens want to be. I am 200 pages in. Very little has happened. We're getting a, a lot of descriptions of nature. So much town gossip. <laughs> we are on a slow mosey through this story, just... Just a nice calm walk through this horror novel. Don't get me wrong, the creepy parts are creepy. I'm really loving the horror aspects. It's very, very Pottsfield, very folk horror. It's corn instead of pumpkins, but it is, I wouldn't be surprised if they read this book before writing the Pottsfield episode. Like it is the vibe that I'm going for. And the creepy parts are very creepy. It's just that they're just, they're just delicately sprinkled <laughs> every 50 pages of this book so far. We got some creepy vibes. It's very autumnal folk horror, which is great. The struggles though, the struggles though. First of all, Mr. Tryon is obsessed with his own writing. Obsessed with his own writing. He will just take off full paragraph to explain something in like the most clunky, obsessed with myself, head up own ass prose that have made me almost give up multiple times. It's not just that it's kind of old. The 70s weren't that long ago. <laughs> it's not just that. This man is just obsessed with hearing his own typewriter. It is a struggle. And as I've said, it's slow as hell. So little happens in the first half of this book. So little happens. It's just Ned, the father of the family, going around painting and having some town gossip. Like three creepy things have happened and I'm 200 pages in. And each of those creepy things lasts about a page. You know, we are just moseying through this little tale at Mr. Tryon's slow ass pace. Keeping both of those things in mind, I'm gonna tell you. If you don't have an Olympic attention span, nah, don't do it to yourself. <laughs> if you don't have a lot of passion for like the history of American horror novels, and if you don't have the sickest attention span of all time, if you don't have a Martin Scorsese movie attention span, don't put yourself through it. You know what I mean? There are some cool parts but <laughs> I wish I was a different person who would put down this book, but I'm not, I'm me, so I'm gonna finish it. The last huge struggle I wanna mention, this mother, the main character, the narrator of this book. Hoo, 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 hoo. Boy, howdy. This man is very like, all the men wanna be me. All the women want to be with me, but I'm just a little guy. <laughs> like very, yeah, I'm really talented and everyone's obsessed with me, but I don't really get it. I'm just okay. It's driving me insane. It's driving me nuts. He backhand compliments himself constantly. Like he's telling us that he's the best dad, the best husband in the whole world and that all of the other townswomen have very booby boobs that bounce boobily and that he can't look away from. <laughs> but he's the best husband ever. He's just really, really hot, you know? And it's, 
he's so vain and so incapable of admitting it, it's driving me up the wall. It's making me go crazy. I wanted to light this book on fire yesterday. It's a library book. I love the library. I wouldn't do that to the library, but I, I was so mad. I was really, I got to my breaking point. For like a hundred pages, I was like, yeah, I can do this. You know, it's going slow, but you know, it's just an old book. Like I can do it. I'm having a good time. It's fine. Yeah, the pros are getting a bit much, but I can do it. I trust this man. And then yesterday, I just broke. But then I remembered that one of my favorite authors, Grady Hendrix, wrote a review of this that I had read like two years ago, and that's what put it on my radar in the first place. And so I was like, okay, okay. I trust Grady. I trust that man. So I went and found the review and I reread it. And it made me determined to finish it. And it's making me enjoy it more. Here's why. First of all, Grady Hendrix explained that this is kind of like a forgotten pillar of a resurgence in American horror that started happening in the late 60s and the early 70s. He said that Tryon's two horror novels, Harvest Home and The Other, it's called The Other, <laughs> are up there with The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. At least they were when they came out. Like those books together brought this big resurgence in horror novels at that time. But we only remember The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby and not these. And he was, the article was kind of like wondering why we as a country just like forgot these books. But at the time they had the same success as those other two huge books that we all still remember. So that really interested me. I just love horror a lot. And it made me want to understand what's going on, understand why this has the significance it has, at least in the eyes of Grady Hendrix, whom I trust. And then he also voiced and validated a lot of the struggles that I just brought up. <laughs> he talked about Tryon being obsessed with his own writing. He talked about Ned being so up his own ass but like, so about it. But he said that as long as someone is willing to push through the first chunk, that those things that I'm struggling with will make the horror more horrifying. Hopefully that's true. Uh, it really gave me permission to hate Ned. Before that, I was like, does Thomas Tryon think that I'm gonna think this is the hottest man ever and that he's so cool and talented and awesome but like really really modest because I do not think that this guy this man sucks but reading that review like kind of gave me permission to just be like no he sucks and that's okay like I don't have to like a main character if it's part of the story so I'm hoping that it is part of the story and that it'll pay off in a big way anyway <laughs> Now that that ranting is over, I am... What? Oh my goodness. Do you wanna come up here and say hi? I have very, very talkative cats. Are you okay? I'm gonna go hang out with my cats and read more. And then uh, when my partner gets home from work, we're gonna do some spooky shopping because we're doing like Halloween stockings this year. So I need to pick up some stuff from my mother-in-law, whose name I drew. I'm gonna go before my cat burns the house down.
having a pretty low energy day, so I thought it'd be nice to get cozy, talk about some books, read some books, watch some Over the Garden Wall, and just try and recharge because I have work in the morning. But before I can get all cozy, I need to talk about my, honestly, maybe my least favorite book I've ever read. <laughs> I, I can't emphasize enough how much I detest this book. I despise it wholeheartedly. I'm angry that I read it. I'm angry that I forced myself to keep reading it. I'm angry in general. I'm just really mad. So I'm trying to be cozy. I have, uh, Emily got me this weighted dinosaur named Moss Cap. So I got my, I got my cozy on. I just, I don't want to spend too much time on this diddly, diddly. book, but I want to obliterate it really quick and then move on with my life and hopefully never think about it again. By the way, I don't generally want to be really negative, but this book deserves it. So I'm just gonna break it down really quick and then move on with my life, hopefully. Leave it in the past, never think about it again because it doesn't deserve it. So, Harvest Home. Uh, to recap just some of the things that generally don't work about this book on like a technical level and then we can move into uh, why it is so philosophically troubling. The prose insufferable throughout. The pacing is absolutely abysmal and I usually like a slow burn. I'm all for a slow burn but when the prose are this opaque and the characters are this either two-dimensional or just insufferable, and there's really nothing to chew on at all, then you're really just like, hey, why are you wasting my time? You know what I mean? Ned, the narrator and the protagonist of this, I hated him so much that whenever he was in danger, I was hoping that he would meet an untimely end. Uh, which really didn't back up what's supposed to be the horrors of this book because I was really rooting for the monsters to get the protagonist because he is so, so, so horrible. And I, again, can get into an unlikable main character. But first of all, he was unlikable in a way that I just don't care to spend time with. Um, and I'm still not convinced that Thomas and the book aren't on his side, which again, we'll get into in a second. Um, <laughs> so there were a few things that I did find horrifying in this book, but they were not the main horror of this book. They only lasted like a paragraph to a page long. And they're really just there to support the overall horror monsters of this book, which is so ridiculous that it really just took away from everything. So to get into the meat of this, what I'm talking about, the horrors of this book are three things. Women having power, sexual liberation, and mother nature slash like nature worship. I have never read such a misogynistic book in a book that is so terrified of women and girls having any semblance of power. Um, someone on Goodreads named Sharon put it best when they said, a book that answers the question, what if Stephen King was an incel? Thank you, Sharon. This book is terrified of women, terrified of women having power. So the big reveal horror here is not people getting murdered, not people being mutilated. It's that the women are running the town and doing these horrible things because this is what happens when women have power, right? When women have power, they castrate men. They take down the powerful men who threaten them, you know? The murders they're committing, the mutilations they're committing, again, only they're like, maybe four pages total of these things going on, and then just eons of time spent on how horrifying it is 
that the women are running things. And these all meld with the other two things, sexual liberation. It is so horrifying that people are having sex that women own their sexuality. And the only way for women to own their sexuality is to just be trollops and to wear red lipstick. And when that happens, they should be punished. And I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to say that there is a very graphic SA scene in this book that uh, Ned, the main protagonist, commits against the town trollop. And it, he insists throughout here that she deserves it, that he's going to kill her with his penis, and that she symbolizes Mother Earth, who he is also going to kill through these means. And it is written in a very erotic way. And there's no point where Thomas convinced me that he wasn't into it. The book feels very into it. And Ned isn't really punished for it. He, he kind of is. But when he's punished, it feels like the book wants me to be horrified that he was hurt this way. Like he is, he remains the hero throughout when after the graphic essay scene, I was like, <laughs> you know, go off queen, like do whatever you gotta do, get rid of him. He is horrible. He's so, so horrible. And I'm so mad that I read that scene. Again, I don't require characters to be likable, but if a character does something like that, and that's never challenged, that remains to the end of the book the like right thing to do and like an appropriate reaction to what's going on. It is just really, uh, really troubling. And then we have the like, just complete misunderstanding of like paganism and nature worship. And you know, which, you know, feels pretty standard for, for this type of folk horror, but it was so strange hearing this man talk about how terrified he was of Mother Earth and how he needed to kill Mother Earth. And it's like, <laughs> like Mother Earth is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so I couldn't get into the headspace of like, like, why are you so horrified about Mother Earth and that people are celebrating and worshiping? Her. Like it, I couldn't get into that headspace. And so ultimately what this book felt like was, especially since it was written in the early 70s, as a negative reaction to second wave feminism, sexual liberation movement, and new age nature-based religions. Three things that I support. <laughs> so it was just deeply, deeply troubling really troubling. And I am very anti-sexual based horror. That's not, I don't want to spend time in that zone. And so I, I really should have checked the trigger warnings on this before I read it. Um, and then I, before we're done with this forever, I wanted to touch back on the Grady Hendrix review that I read about it. And you know, it's not like he's ever going to see this video or answer me, but I'm just putting it out into the universe. Grady Hendrix seemed to really feel like Ned was the bad guy of this book and that the book isn't condoning these things, but that those are like the horror of the book is kind of what I got from it. But I did not feel that way at all. And I'm so curious as to, my cat needs to come in or he's gonna lose his mind. The biggest horror my cat can think of is closed doors. So <laughs> I would, I'm so curious to know what it was about the way this book was written that made Grady Hendrix feel like we were meant to root against Ned because it felt the opposite way to me. It really felt like we were meant to root him on and like him. And if not like him, then at least agree with him that the horrors of this story are women having power and having sex and mother nature being loved and appreciated. Luca, it has to be closed. Which side of it do you want to be on? Come here. Hi, stinky boy. 
If any of you have read this book and, and you feel like it's critiquing a fear of these things rather than perpetuating a fear of these things, please, I would love to talk about it. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so curious as to what about the way this book was written makes you feel that way from a non-judgmental place, I promise. I, I just really want to understand uh, that take on it because to me it really felt like an attack on women, <laughs> honestly. So yeah, I never want to think about this book ever again. If you're curious about more specifics about what happens, feel free to read the one star reviews on Goodreads. There are a lot of really good reviews on there that really break down the specifics, especially of that scene that I don't want to go into detail in because there are some aspects of that scene and the specifics of how it was written that really illustrates uh, the problems with this book. But I don't want to make this video about that and I really never want to think about it again. So if you're curious, by all means, but now I'm going to return that book to the library and hopefully after I finish editing this video, never think about it ever, ever again. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I'm only 16 pages into Dark Harvest and unfortunately my troubles with <laughs> The last book are kind of bleeding into this one. So I think I'm gonna pause on it and today read the graphic novels and kind of get into a cozy space, watch some over the garden wall and just try to like cleanse the palette a little bit. And then probably, this is only 150 like really short, quick pages. So I might read this over my next two work days and then come back with a wrap up of it in the outro. It's a cloudy, foggy day. I've had a lot of really busy days in a row, so I'm feeling kind of low energy. So I just want to get really cozy and just have a nice autumnal time with some new media that doesn't make me feel like shit. But before I go, we did a uh, Hello Stockings this year. And so I thought I'd show you a few of the things I got in mine. My fiance, Emily, pulled my name. Yeah, I just wanna show you a few cool things that she got me. I thought that would be fun. She got me this cozy blanket that has like a haunted house scene on it, but it's black, purple, and pink, which goes perfectly with our other room, which is all, it's like the opposite of this room. It's all pastels and like, it's very bubble gum. <laughs> so this goes perfectly in there. She got me A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. Uh, I started reading this last night because <laughs> I, was, I was like, I just need to be in a different, headspace. I need the opposite of what I just read. And I'm really enjoying it so far. A Witch and a Demon Fake Dating. Excellent. <laughs> exactly what I need right now. And then she got me these, these fuzzy socks with a cat that looks like our Sparrow Boy um, with a witch hat. Very cute. She got me my favorite candle. I it's Cozy Nights from Target. It's what's burning over there right now and it's almost out. So she got me a new big one. I love this candle so much. I'm so excited. She crocheted me a leaf and she also recently crocheted me this little frog. There we go. And this cute little mushroom. And now I have this cute little leaf. So I just have a shelf of these cute cozy things that Emily has crocheted for me and I love it. Some candy, of course, some spooky nail polishes, and then this pumpkin-y jack-o'-lantern mug, which is also perfect for this vlog. It was so fun. It's the first year that we've did, done that. We're, we're really Halloween people, and it was just so much fun. So hopefully we do that every year now. But anyway, I am going to go cuddle up, cuddle with some cats, and read some cute graphic novels.
quick reading update time. I just got home from work. I'm rather tired, <laughs> but I wanted to update you about what I've read so far uh, since you know what. Uh, <laughs> I read Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch while on uh, reading sprouts over on Jordan Lines Patreon, and I love them so much. They were so wholesome, so beautifully illustrated. It's about this little humanoid garlic, I suppose, who was created by a witch who had created all of these little human fruits and vegetable hybrids to help her in her garden. But one day they see that the castle on the other side of the clearing is inhabited again. And the witch remembers that a vampire used to live there. So they all freak out and garlic naturally resistant to vampires right so they send her so beautiful all about bravery and change they were very wholesome very soul nourishing and exactly what i needed and then i also started and and a little over halfway through dark harvest by norman partridge this isn't going the best and I don't think it's the book's fault. This book is about a small town where every Halloween, all of the 16 year old boys who've been locked up in their rooms, not fed, not watered for five days, they're let out to hunt down the October boy who is like a scarecrow with a pumpkin head who has come to life and is fighting them back. It's very, very action heavy. I wouldn't say gory, but a lot of killing. Just not really overly descriptive about it. The vibes are pretty good. You know, it, it feels very October. Uh, it kind of feels like if Ray Bradbury's like October books had a more violent <laughs> premise. The writing is very here in the now, it's very fast paced, it's very plot driven, but it still sprinkles in, you know, some emotional backstory for our characters, both the October boy and the kids hunting him. Am I living? No, I'm having a pretty fine time. <laughs> you know, it's fine. And again, I don't think that it's the book's fault. I am really realizing more than ever that I really love horror that's very emotion centric, very like emotional horror, very character driven horror. And I like to take a bit more time, not as much time as Harvest Home did, but take a bit more time and, and get to know what's going on. And this is the opposite of that. This is very action, plot, very quick moving. We're never in one place very long. Uh, it feels feels pretty testosterone-y and it's a lot of boys with weapons fighting. It's well written. And if you're into that kind of thing, I think you'd probably like this, but uh, it's not so much my saying, and so it's kind of slow going, but it's pretty short. I should finish it tomorrow and then I can uh, let you know in the outro how I feel about it. I donned my vegetables, had to be done. Also, I forgot that my partner got me these in my, the like Halloween Pillsbury cookies in my Hello stocking as well. I love them. Anyway, I finished our harvest and it was fine. <laughs> this vlog has been a wild ride. My least favorite book ever, some very cozy middle grade graphic novels, and then just a solid nothing in particular for me. For me! <laughs> I do want to say, if you want like a quick, fast-paced, spooky read, if you like action, fighting, intense Halloween vibes, um, I wouldn't necessarily say Pottsfield. This one takes place in the 60s in a small town. And it feels more like the setting of Something Wicked This Way Comes, except that the boys are murdering each other and trying to murder a pumpkin man. <laughs> um, it's not overly gory, 
Uh, the writing style is very fast paced and while it's not for me, I can recognize that it's very well written and I think a lot of people would like it. If you're a plot person, if you're a fast paced person, if you want some action but not necessarily a ton of gore, and if you're just looking for something really like a quick Halloween-y read, I think this would be perfect. I tend to prefer some more characters, some more women. That's what I'm reading next. <laughs> and I think it'll be a better time for me. Let's just say that. But this was really well written. It just wasn't really my thing. And then, like I said, loved these. So cozy. It did feel a bit like Over the Garden Wall, just less um, of the old timey spookiness and more of like a wholesome cottagecore spookiness. And then my nemesis. There's one thing that I want to say before this video is over, before I stop talking about this book forever. I was watching some of the footage back and I just want to emphasize that I understand that novels are fiction and that authors write characters who do horrible things without condoning the horrible things that they're doing. I'm not sitting here trying to say that Thomas Tryon condones S.A. or anything like that. It's just that at the same time, we do impart morals and values through stories. And while I don't think that Thomas Tryon was like a predator or anything, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying he condones that, but I am saying that with the way that this book was written, it did feel to me like he was perpetuating a misogynistic outlook. And you might disagree and that's cool. And I'd love to hear why in like a respectful, mutually kind dialogue type of way. But for me, this felt icky. My takeaways from this vlog. <laughs> I don't know if I'm cut out for the oldies like I thought I was. We'll see. I do want to, I do want to give some more oldie horror paperbacks a shot, but I don't know if I can let go of my general <laughs> and just like have a crazy off the wall time without getting in my head about it. And also I tend to like horror written by women more. So <laughs> a lot of those were written by the dudes, which is great. Just I tend to prefer what I think this is gonna be. I learned that it's okay to freaking DNF a book, even if I'm doing it for a reading vlog. If I, I'm struggling the way I did with this one. LDNF. Do I feel like I came out with new favorites? Not so much. The graphic novels, absolutely. But I I'm not. I'm not feeling over the moon about my October horror reads so far. So I'm gonna go detox <laughs> with some spooky but like cozy cute romance and then I'm going to read some she's days and gays horror uh and I'm really looking forward to it but that said thank you so much for being here I really appreciate it if you've made it to the end of this video like the video comment did you like the like pop culture theme I mean, I'm kind of a pop culture hound, so I think it would be so fun to choose some of my favorite TV shows and movies and make like a themed reading vlog based off of that with like the TBR and the like visuals and editing in that style. Let me know what you guys think or if there's any movies or shows you would like to see me do this with or any other episodes of Over the Garden Wall you'd like to see me do this with. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe if you want to and I will see you next week with a book haul. Bye.